What's up? Just back with another video here. So uh, we finally got Justin Trudeau uh, making a little bit of a statement here, and it's kind of funny. So I just wanted to uh, get into this a little bit with you. I do have a quick video to show you guys. Uh, but before I do, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow this channel. I really, really appreciate every single one of you who does. Um, please just don't forget if you do, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked the video, uh, just have a, have a look at the bottom there. There's options to subscribe and to like the video. And also please don't forget to like, uh, or sorry, leave your comments too, as to what you think, as I always enjoy uh, reading and uh, commenting back with you guys as well. All right. So have, let's have a look at this video and then we'll talk about it after like usual. land that's owned by the federal government that isn't being used anymore. Sorry, I just got to start that over again here. Here's something we can all agree on. We need more housing in Canada. But that the government should step up and make sure that housing gets built, that's where some people disagree. Take federal lands, land that's owned by the federal government that isn't being used anymore. The Conservative Party leader wants to sell it all off to make a quick buck. That does nothing for you. The federal government owns tons of land in cities and towns across the country. You can build a lot of homes on those lands, so that's what we're going to do. We're offering up that public land for housing. And we're not just going to sell it all to developers, we're going to long-term lease it. See, by leasing the land, we get to work with communities to make sure that home builders are building the right homes. Homes you can afford. We've got land we got lots of houses to build, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Right. So first of all, he's been in office for nine years. And about a year ago, he said that housing was not a federal issue. And to be fair, for the most part, that's true until he made it one with mass immigration and just insane amounts of you know time it takes to build these houses. You can't keep up with the demand. So now it is a federal problem. Now, second of all, when he says that Pierre Polyev wants to sell it all up for a quick buck, no, he said, he literally said he wants to turn those government, um, those abandoned government buildings, basically, to housing. That's what he said. He didn't give his specific plan, but you're assuming it. And again, for the people who still don't understand why Pierre Polyev won't give his plan right now, it's because there's not an election coming up right now. Why would Pierre Polyev give Trudeau all of his ideas so that Trudeau has a year to enact them? And then he reap some of the benefits and probably go up in the polls. Why would Pierre Polyev do that to himself? If liberals and NDP supporters, if you guys want to hear his ideas in depth, get your stupid leaders to call an election. Okay, it's really that simple. If you want to hear it that bad, no problem. Call an election, okay? It's not that hard. This is how it gets done. You don't you don't just give all of your opponents all the all of your secrets a year before an election. Look at what look at what's happening in, in the states. You see Trump saying, "Hey, I'm in Nevada. You're not going to pay taxes on tips." What's Kamala uh, Kamala Harris and all the the liberal Democrats now saying? Oh yeah, we're going to do the same thing. They're just copying his ideas. Andrew Yang calls for um, well the, the the Democrats now need to come up with a really good plan to you know fix the health care issue right after Robert Kennedy Jr. joined forces with Trump and made that very point. They they just want to copycat everything. It's 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 insane, and you don't just give it to them because they want it. Make them work for it. Call an election, Trudeau, or sing. You have the power to do it too. But they won't. Why not? Because even though apparently. I've heard this all week. Apparently, it's been a terrible week for the conservatives. Really? They're still above 41% right here. Oh, but they're down four points. Okay. Seems like a couple of those points went to the PPC and the Greens. Liberals are still at 25%. And by the way, 338, the way it works is it's not just about recent polling data. It's also about history as well. And recent history would actually bode well for the liberals. So they're going to get bumped up a little bit. I would actually be very, very shocked if they got anywhere close to 25% of the vote. They'll probably only get about 20, if that, especially considering what's about to happen in January, as we've talked about on this channel uh, many times now. But, you know, the interest rates are going up, carbon tax is going up, people are going to be even more financially pinched, people are going to be even more pissed off. This isn't going to go well for Trudeau. 
Not to mention we have question period coming up again in September where Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives are just going to hammer the Liberals, just like they were before. So even if you might see, like, I think the Liberals were at 22, 23% before, like, last week. Okay, so they're up to, sorry, it says here 3%. Okay, you're still down 16 points. And if that's what you consider a bad week for Pierre Polyev, you're truly screwed, aren't you? Oh, it's a bad week for the Conservatives. Oh, he's still going to win 203 seats at least, and he has 41% of the vote. That's a bad week? If 25% for you is a good week and 83 seats is a good week for you, yeah, keep coping. People like me are going to continue to laugh because it's ridiculous that you, you guys think that, oh, it was a bad week for Pierre. It's just in, it's insane, all this absolute rhetoric and just basically they're just lying and making things up so that they can wake some of their former liberal supporters up and say, oh, no, we're going to win, guys. Come vote for us. It ain't working out for you. This wasn't a bad week for for Pierre Polyev. It's been a bad two years for Justin Trudeau, especially the last two years. It's been a bad nine years, but let's be honest. People are really, really waking up over the past couple of years. Finally. It's about damn time because this clown and his, uh, his NDP lapdog need to go. And hopefully once the NDP loses or come comes in third or fourth place again, Hopefully the NDP will be smart enough to remove Jugmeet Singh as he's an absolute idiot. If you don't believe me, he just referred to a bag of apples as a sack of potatoes. I made a video on it yesterday. Go have a look if you want. He really did that. He's that dumb. Not to mention all the other media gaffes and all these ridiculous things. When I'm prime minister and then everyone starts laughing at him. Yeah. He's embarrassed himself enough. So is Trudeau. You may not like Pierre Polyev and he may not be perfect, but he's a lot better than what we have now, especially when it comes to a fiscal, you know, financial plan. Justin Trudeau can't manage a candy store. And that kind of goes the same for all liberals. They've never been good financially, ever. Conservatives, at least they're they're better on that. I got a lot of problems uh, with Pierre Polyev, some of the things he's saying recently, although due to the terms and conditions or the terms of service rather on YouTube, I cannot talk about that. Um, so yeah, if you want to follow my, my other opinions where you can actually have real freedom of speech, you can follow me on X and on rumble at the Dan Freeman show. And I look forward to seeing all of you guys there as well. Oh, uh, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Please don't forget to like, and subscribe, like I said at the beginning and leave your comments. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back shortly with a new video.